All right. What's popping, everybody? What's up? So we're going to get into it. I got five of the dividend kings that are currently <clears throat> have the highest yields on them. If you don't know, dividend kings have been increasing their dividends for 50 consecutive years. So we're going to look at the top five highest. I'm going to give you, for those of you watching on the replay <clears throat> or even watching live, you can go back and just pause it. I'm going to try and move through these quickly just to give an idea of a company that uh, some companies that are paying high dividend yields that have been increasing those dividends for 50 consecutive years. Always remember that a company can suspend, cut, reduce, eliminate its dividend for any reason. They're not sacrosanct. And that's just always something to keep in the forefront of your mind. So never buy a company just because they're a dividend king or a dividend aristocrat or any other kind of dividend moniker, knight, achiever, whatever you got. <clears throat> so feel free to pause because I'm going to go through the Simply Safe dividend scores. And you guys can, again, just watch on the replay, pause if you want to look at some of those metrics a little bit quicker. What I love about Simply Safe dividends is that they go back 10 years. So we can get a really nice picture of what has been going on in the past. But always remember, that's lagging data. That's all in the past. And we don't know what's going to happen in the future because the future data is the most important. And unfortunately, we don't have that future data yet. So let me check my levels here. There we go. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Hey, this guy's still learning and growing and stumbling and bumbling and fumbling his way along. So with that being said, everybody, let's jump right into the number. I got to get a little bit slicker with this sharing here. So again, for those of you on the replay, thank you for joining. And I hope you do find this information uh, useful as soon as we can get to the old, the old window here. All right. So Dun, 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 dun. Here's what we want to do. The first one, let me move my little chat box here. All right, so check it out. The very, very first one, Stanley Black and Decker, dividend safety score of 90. And again, how I'm going to do this is I'll just go through these quickly so you guys can um, pause this in the replay. Uh, look at that dividend streak, dude. 145 years for Stanley Black and Decker. They haven't been growing it very quickly. Their last one is only 1.3%. But I think a lot of you like Stanley Black and uh, Decker, currently paying $3.20 per share. And you see very slight raise, only a penny from the last time. And again, remember, you can always pause these on the replay and um, check things out for yourself. Current dividend yield, dude, check that out. 120% above the five-year average. <clears throat> I think that is really, really awesome. And we're going to see if it looks like it might be sustainable at the very, very low end of the 52-week range is ticker SWK. And these are what you might want to pause that I'm just going to go through a little bit kind of quickly here. These are the annual figures from the last 10 years. And their current free cash flow payout ratio is negative because their free cash flow per share is negative $15 currently. So that is something to keep an eye on. I don't remember if they had an acquisition or if any of you know why that suddenly dropped. I would assume it would revert to the mean. What's up, clowning, man? What's going on, baby? And their earnings per share have been dropping down. So again, we'll just I'll just leave these on the screen for a second. So those of you watching in replay, if you want to pause this and just do your own little bit of due, due diligence, I guess. Uh, their shares outstanding. They did buy some back. They had slowly been increasing, which is something you don't want to see. Paulo, what's up from Portugal, man? Paulo from Portugal. What's up, man? Uh, Royk, return on investing. So these numbers have dropped off a little bit. So that's something to be concerned about and something we need to keep in mind. And we look at Stanley Black and Decker. Oh, Stanley, the net debt has been creeping up. I don't like to see that. I would like to see that coming down a little bit future and their free cash flow margin, negative 7%. And I don't like their ICR. And as far as the intrinsic value goes, check that out. For Stanley Black and Decker, we have an intrinsic value of $123.02 for the base case. This is alphaspread.com, by the way. And again, always go back and watch this and pause it. The worst case is $100.70. So they think that even in the worst case of negative growth for the company, they are still undervalued. I'll put up a couple of these numbers here, the um, fundamental analysis. 
Again, you can look at these, pause it later. Hey, Poland, dude. Diliu from Poland. <laughs> I don't remember Polish words. I was going to say something. But that's Stanley Black and Decker. So, um, yeah, again, remember, pause this in the, in the replay if you want. Next up is da, da, da. our next dividend king on the list is by no surprise 3M. They've this is all talking about future. Investors are worried about the litigation that they might suffer, but still get a safety score of 75. And that's my stats. I wanted to show you during the last recession, their sales were negative 13%, and their recession returned almost exactly in line with the SP, which was negative 55 percent so that's kind of an interesting thing you can see right there dividend growth dude it's going to be so small going forward 63 years uninterrupted but they had been growing it pretty nicely i think they're going to be trying to conserve a lot of capital for what could come from the uh, pfas the forever chemicals and from the earplug litigation so we will oh shamir i did not listen to the 3m earning call so if there's any main point from that dude let us know uh, let's again, I'm going to go through these quickly here. Um, you all watching in the replay can pause these. Come on, computer. What is the deal? Not all right. Payment details, $5.96. It's not my internet connection. I just checked it. I won't check it with you, but uh, here we go. Timeliness. <sighs> really computer now. <laughs> so their dividend yield is 41% above the five year average. So that is something to keep in mind. And why do we have nothing here? This, everybody, is the beauty of live, going live, goofy things happen. We'll refresh the page here. And I do believe yeah, I'm still live. Come on, man. Don't do this to me now. Well, I'll see what you guys are saying. Excited for investing. Me too, Kevin. I'd be more excited if my computer was showing. I don't know if this is simply safe or what. Of course, this is just really, really ridiculous right now. We got the spinning blue wheel of death. I don't know why nothing's loading up. This kind of stinks. So where are you guys from? Let's take a minute here. Okay, Shamir, I guess we will. I don't understand why. What? Uh, let me refresh it again. Dude, this was all like, you know what I mean? It's, it's stupid. You, you get... You set everything up, and then it's like, bam, Murphy. All right, Kevin's in Arizona. Page unresponsive. Let's, I don't know, dude. Let's, um, here, we'll just do this. We'll open it up again. Do this. Da, 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 da. Maybe it was just something goofy here. So always another way, right? All right, 3M, let's, so those of you watching in replay, let's hope everything's here. We were on uh, payment details. Oh my God. There we go. Okay, hiccup, I guess, right? So uh, there you see the payment details. It's only been going up, <laughs> I know, a penny. Romania in the house, what's up? LA County, clowning in Los Angeles. Time, Los Angeles, City of Angels. 41% um, above the five-year average is 3M's dividend yield. If you believe they're going to be okay, now could be a great time to add 3M, but there is a lot of risk bakes, <laughs> baked in, and their financials still, free cash flow payout ratio has jumped up to 88%. And again, we'll just, we'll go through this quick since we wasted a bunch of time. You can pause some of these, look at it on your own, look at the trends from the last 10 years. See what you see. If uh, you think anything's going to revert to the mean sales growth, negative 2%. Not surprising. I do believe we are in a recession already. Shares outstanding down to 574 million for 3M. 3M's total sales, though, is up and to the right. And they still got re good return on equity, return on invested capital. Remember, return on equity can be affected by bringing on a bunch of debt. So that can be a little bit of a... Um, not disguised number, whatever you want to call it. Deceiving number, I suppose. And those are some of their operating margin. Uh, net debt, only 50%. And their interest coverage, 10.95%. So let's see what 3M gets for a intrinsic valuation. 
Base case, $151.18. So it says alpha spread. And the worst case they give is, um, my Lord, $119.95. So base case, it's undervalued. And the worst case is negative growth for the next five years. They're predicting it's $119.95. <clears throat> so could be a good time to buy if it dips below $119.95 again. And there's some of their profitability and solvency scores. Again, you want to pause this later and go through it on your own time. Let us, let's see. Hey, Eli, Eli is a little bit, you're getting ahead of us, Eli. <laughs> I had these all set up so I could just hit the back button. Just a minute, Eli, Mr. Spoil the Show. <clears throat> okay, here's the number. What are we on? Number three. Highest yielding dividend king is Lake and Platt. This is one I love. Dividend safety score of 70. Super boring company. I was looking at adding more and I very well just may convince myself by the time we're done with this. Their dividend growth. Oh, look, I had something highlighted from a previous uh, something. Uh, dividend growth, kind of slow, but they've been paying that uninterrupted dividend for 55 years and they did just become a dividend king. So they do uh, fit the bill. Payment details. There we go, $1.76 annually. Uh, they raised that two cents last. And timeliness, <clears throat> thank God it's working. Now I'm holding my breath each time. Their current yield, 34% above the five-year average of 5% yield. Very nice. That PE, the forward PE, you're paying $16.30 for every $1 of Leggett and Platt's earnings. And yeah, they're toward the lower end of their 52-week price range. They don't jump that much, $30 to $43. And their financials, free cash flow payout ratio has been coming back down. It was at 137% in 2021. So let's go through these quickly here for Leggett and Platt. Then we'll get to the Intrinsic value that alpha spread is going to give. That's all right, Eli. No worries, buddy. No worries. I don't mind. Yeah, they've uh, not been buying back shares. <clears throat> they've been increasing about a million a year the last couple of years. That's slight dilution, but their sales are still going up and to the right. I think they're a really good company, but they could be hampered by a deep recession as people buy less Couch, they do couch cushions, auto cushions like bedding. They do flooring. They have several different divisions. Um, I think they even have a fluid power division. But let's see, their net debt, not uh, yeah, 58% net debt. Like to see that a little lower. Seeking uh, Simply Safe wants to see them below 40%. 40, uh, 40%. They're at 58%. And a little bit higher interest coverage ratio would be nice because that debt is going to be getting more expensive. And let's look at Leggett and Platt's intrinsic value. There we go. Got the bed. All right. <laughs> so I get, I love those little things like that. So let's see. Um, yeah, answer Clownin's uh, question down there. He's, uh, he, or even just yearly dividends, you know, whatever. If you feel comfortable sharing that. $41.36 for Leggett and Platt. Currently undervalued 16% in a base case. And worst case, Fairly valued, $34.76. So even in a worst case, five years of negative growth, it looks like um, Leggett and Platt is still a good value to be had. And these are some of Alpha Spread's uh, profitability scores, solvency scores. Don't worry, we won't get into all that. And I love Alpha Spread, by the way. I would recommend doing a free trial. It's a cool thing. You can at least go through all your stocks and get all the... Uh, intrinsic valuations that they give for those. All right. Now, Mr. Eli, <laughs> Mr. Eli, call him the spoiler. Number two here. I was just going to hit back. It was going to be nice, but the number two highest yielding dividend stock, um, uh, dividend king. I'm sure a lot of you guys can uh, guess number one. This one, uh, I'd, I'd probably go with number one if I had to choose two of them between these two, but they do tobacco, UVV. It's like uh, business to business tobacco. I believe they're just growing it. They're headquartered in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, dividend safety score of 60, borderline safe. That dividend growth, though, 51 years, they've been growing the dividend, but 20-year CAGR of 4%. So you're trading in high growth for high yield, but I do believe there was a study done by some gentleman that ran the dividend night 
scenario, Dividend Knights, was that not Motley Fool, I think, right? And they said that over a long period of time, I think it was 15 years, that you want to be in a lower starting yield but higher growth than a higher starting yield but lower growth. So this is, yeah, they are, right? Uh, Shamir uh, Altria is also headquartered in Richmond, Virginia. So let's go through really quickly here. UVV, $3.16 per year. Um, yeah, they've been set, they've been raising a penny a year since uh, May of 2020. It's not a lot, but still, it's a high uh, high starting yield, and their timeliness. They have some incomplete data. I looked at this earlier. <laughs> their dividend is currently in line. It's it's one percent above the five year average, so eh, doesn't look to be too too uh, at a good value. And this and remember, by the way, price and value two completely different things. And this is what makes me a little bit worried about UVV. Here is the <laughs> just the big free cash flow payout ratio. It's been negative, and it was 117% back in 2018, and now it's been negative for four since 2022. Do simple math here in my head, right? Hey, Warren Buffett said if he doesn't understand, his brain is like a calculator, and if he doesn't or a computer, his brain is a computer, and if he doesn't understand numbers, then they don't compute. So we want to keep things easy, I think. And yeah, just all this, I don't understand. They must not have any earnings per share, I'm guessing. I didn't dig too deep, probably should have, but we're going to go with the data they have here as uh, negative. So I guess no earnings per share currently. If anyone wants to do a quick dive on that and verify, feel free. And they only have 24.9 million shares, does UVV, which is a dividend king, mind you. And you can pause these if you want to look at them closer inspection. Feel free on the replay, return on equity, and it's all low. It's all low. I don't know about UVV. How do you guys feel about UVV? Do you invest? Would you buy here? Interest coverage, only five. Yeah. Now, if you don't know interest coverage ratio is how much operating income a company has for every one dollar of operating income. No. <laughs> How much operating income a company has to cover every $1 of operating expenses? What I was trying to say on this Sunday morning as we're looking at the top five highest yielding dividend kings, and they have $5.46 of operating income to cover every $1 of interest expense. We'd like to see that a little bit higher, but let's get an intrinsic valuation on our old friend UVV right here as we hit our back button. We see $66.80. So as a base case, UVV, Universal Corp, which check this out. I just noticed. I'm pretty sure that this is, this is not the logo for uh, the tobacco company, Universal Corp. Maybe it is. That looks like the uh, movie theater to me. So let me know in the description below if that is indeed. That looks like Universal Pictures. I'm pretty sure. So I think they goofed up there. But anyways. Back to this uh, worst case, uh, UVV's intrinsic value estimate is unreliable because it is based only on discounted cash flow value. So I'm guessing that they do not have any, I should have looked, I don't, I'm trying to see if you guys said, but um, yeah, thanks. Hit the like button if you do like this. I, I forget to say, man, if you guys don't remind me, I, I got to remind people more. I'm going to do a timer every 15 seconds, just remind you. Uh, free cash flow market, yeah, 10%. So we saw that in um, as well. But UVV, I would take a really, really hard look at before investing because it looks a little bit, a little bit choppy to me. And like here, we're just doing a, I'm just scrolling and looking. They show their competitive, the competitors, and you can see the intrinsic values right here. Uh, Altria, British to, uh, American Tobacco, two that I do invest in, uh, Japan Tobacco. Interesting though. So there you go. And Alpha Spread, I like it. They show that every company's suppliers and their customers, so their customers are predominantly just US and Japan, which is pretty uh, pretty interesting. And let's see if, yeah, you, you guys can pause this later if you want. We'll just... Uh, insider trading. There you go. So four different people in the last three to six months have sold UVV and there have been no purchases. I like this. I'm really liking alpha spread. I think it's nice, a nice tool and it's not terrible. You can use a, 
discount code for it's $162 for the year. But yeah, and then they show you the shareholder return. There's a lot of other different, um, a lot of different things that you can look at here. And then you can go into all the financials and just play around with your own. <laughs> Don't play around too much. You can play around with the, the discounted rate. You you can just make all the adjustments yourself. And it's a really, really nice site if you're into this type of thing. If you're not just invest in like, as, not financial advice, SCHD or VTI. Nice, Shamir, he loves the Divi. I'll get to your question in just a minute, Andrew, because we're going to get to number one. So what did we say here? I forgot. UVV is indeed, um, right? It's undervalued. I don't remember. Anyway, let's see. Uh, let go summary. Let me move this here. Yeah, it's so six. It's sixteen percent undervalued in a base case, but I think UVV does look a little bit risky. And the number one, I think all y'all have guessed the number one dividend king that is most not undervalued, the highest yielding dividend king. Oh, that's right. I had to open up a new page. <laughs> Dope. Yeah, Altria. Ticker Mo, the big mighty Mo, the tobacco Mo, the Mo 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 tobacco go. So 8.51% yield, dividend safety score 55. So it's interesting that they have them just a shade below Universal Corp. But I think they're they're going to be okay. And let's see what they did during the last recession. Negative 50.2% sales during the last recession. So remember that tobacco is supposed to hold up. But recession return was 20%. So the stock price did way better than the market. So that's very, uh, very interesting. Yeah, they've been growing that dividend for 52 years. Look at this. I got stuff from these last uh, love mowing their divvies. I do too, man. I do too. 52 years they've been growing it. And this right here was the Philip Morris spinoff, right? Or when they broke out of Philip Morris. I believe that's what that was which now looks like more of a competitor than it does like, um, I don't remember what the word I'm looking for. But anyway, payment details, just they're going to keep growing it a little bit by little bit. What was that growth? Um, yeah, 4.4%. You know, not crazy. 8% uh, five-year CAGR. Yeah, Mo Ben paying. Mo Ben paying. Mo money. Mo money. What was that? Uh uh, in living color, dude, I loved in living color. The gub meant Damon Wayne's and Keenan Ivory Wayne's doing the mo money, mo money. Anyway, sorry, self indulgent uh, walk down memory lane there. So they have, uh, yeah, Kevin loves mo. Okay, I'll get to those in a second, guys. So I don't remember what we're doing. See, I'm getting goofy here. We're looking at their timeliness. So that dividend yield is 20% above the five-year average. So they do pay out quite a bit. Always know that tobacco companies are usually paying out a hefty, hefty amount to shareholders. Uh, so they don't have all that cash sitting around and become the target of, of government. I call it the eye of Sauron in uh, in Washington, D.C. It casts its eye, its eye upon the companies that have lots and lots of cash and want to punish them. But yeah, so that's Mo. They return a lot, and then coupled their financials, eight pretty pretty steady Eddie. They were high there in 2016. I think that was from Jewel, right? When they acquired Jewel, that's why that free cash flow payout ratio shat, shat <laughs> it shat up. But then it did go right back to the it reverted to the mean. So that's always nice to see when you see that mean reversion. And free cash flow per share, dude, four dollars forty six cents. So. Uh, yeah, earnings per share up into the right every year because they're buying back shares, which currently at 1.81 billion. So there's a lot of Momo shares out there. <laughs> Total sales are 20 billion. And yeah, just a, a interesting company. Uh, return on equity, negative 172%. Casey's watching. She might have an insight into that or some of you guys, but 48% return on invested capital. Love it for big, mighty Mo. And there's a few more numbers you can look at. This is wrong. They they do have debt close to 90%. Definitely something to keep an eye on. But their interest coverage ratio, $10.66 for every $1 of interest. So that so far looks good. And if you want to look up anything on Simply Save Dividends while we're still chatting, hanging out here, put it in the comments. We will get to that. Even get an intrinsic valuation. 
So Moe's intrinsic valuation is slow ass computer. Come on, man. Oh, we're still on, <laughs> we're still on uh, Universal here. I guess I'm gonna just have to type her in. Come on, you can do it. There we go. $55.15 base case intrinsic valuation for Mo. And let's see, what do I want to show you? The worst case, 41 bucks. So it's close to that worst case, but it's uh, 6% overvalued at the ba the worst case. But the base case, if all things just remain steady, idea as I understand it, will be at $55.15. And 15 cents. So it's 20% undervalued. A couple uh, fundamental numbers for you guys that are watching on the replay and want to maybe pause this, get a little bit of a feel for some of this. And fun thing, let's see. I believe they're only sell to companies in America. They give me the Wall Street targets here. So 49 bucks is the average. I like that. It's interesting. There's the competitive landscape again. Just a bunch of Bunch of companies, including Smore International Holdings, Voffers Vaping and Technology Solutions. All right, anyway, uh, here we go. So their suppliers, kind of cool, right? Altria's suppliers are six are from the U.S., one from Canada, one from Germany, and their main customers, U.S. and Canada. And let's see, it shows you who they are. Philip Morris and Performance Food Group, and in Canada is the Kronos group. So interesting. There you go that it shows that uh, that stuff. But yeah, and what have insiders been doing? There has been apparently nothing at all. I find that hard to believe, but I guess so. I guess that's good. They're holding inside of there. So um, yeah, I see your comments here. Let's look up a couple, huh? Let's see. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Shamir, TSN. Let's see. I'll, I'll just really quick, man. I'll go. I'll, you know what I'm going to start doing? Instead of just blathering on about everything, I'll just do something like this. Dude, 99 safety score for Tyson Foods. I'll just jump down to the dividend growth so you guys can pause that. 31 years of uninterrupted dividends, 10 years. It has been growing. Uh, there's your payment details and the timeliness. Tyson. 34% above the five-year average is that dividend yield. And they are way at the low end of the 52-week range. Didn't somebody just leave their CFO? or I know they had an issue with the one dude biting somebody's nose or ear or something at a wording game. I, craziness going on. What's going on over there? What are they putting in that chicken? <laughs> uh, free cash flow payout ratio, though, has jumped way up to 83%. I'd love to know. Yeah, Caitlin, it is. I, I just read that as you said that. Uh, there you go, Shamir. I'll let you, if you want to go back and pause this, you can. Shares outstanding. This has been about flat. Um, so that's the new the new thing we're going to do here. You can you can watch on the replay, find your stock, and and this is your free look into uh, into Alpha Spread and um, uh, what are we on? Simply Safe, uh, TSN. We'll just get you some prices here. We'll let's see their what they say their their current ninety seven dollars. So they say that they are base case undervalued by thirty three percent, Shamir. And the worst case, what do we got, dude? I think I got a bunch of junk on my computer. Probably viruses. Seventy three dollars. So undervalued by eleven percent. Tyson looks like an interesting company to keep an eye on, and I saw couple others here they wanted to yeah casey zim cuts their dividend next year i th i think they're they're crazy i don't I wonder if they give a uh let's see if they have a little fun here if they give an intrinsic valuation for good old zim oh it's zim integrated shipping a server a sales interesting 69 dollars and let's see the worst case is 44 and they're currently about 24 bucks. So I don't know if I would necessarily, um, I don't know. Interesting. I don't think simply safe has them rated. If they do, it's probably red. I don't, I've never looked. Yeah. Unrated, but that dividend yield. Oh dude, that dividend yield is 111, 111%. 
They don't even have the growth chart because it would be off the charts. Free cash flow power. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Their shipping is is going to revert to the mean, I think. And uh, oh, Shamir, you bought TSN at sixty five. Nice, nice. Who, somebody else wanted me to look up one more thing here. Um, yeah, Florin. Check HII. Was that Huntington Ingalls? Right. They make ships. I think they spun out of. Who did Huntington spin out of? They spun out of. I don't know if they tell us here in the about. My Lord, computer, you can do it. Uh, yeah, they're in Newport News. I was in Newport News. Fun fact, they build the U.S. Navy nuclear ships. That was mine right there. USS John C. Stennis. I was on a nuclear ship. And it doesn't say, does anybody know? I swear I remember hearing or reading once that, get out of here, that uh, that they spun out of like, General Dynamics or Raytheon or I don't remember who it doesn't tell here, but let's see. HII. Look at this. Look at what is the deal? I don't know if this is simply safe or, or I got too much stuff going on on my computer here. Anyways, this is really nice. You guys are getting a look at a blank screen here and, uh, Oh, joy. Oh, the beauty. Northrop Grumman. I think that's right, Kevin. I think you saved me. Who do we, I don't remember what I was doing. HII. We're on Zim still. Where's the little search window? Oh, here. <laughs> Duh. Does anybody have any good programs you can run for uh, speeding up the old computer? I got a laptop. It's old. I probably need to run some kind of cleaner or some junk here. There we go. $257.29. So they say they're undervalued by 12 cents, Huntington Ingalls, and $199 for the worst case. And this thinking, I think it's something with the uh with the memory, but we did HII, right? Do it one more time. For those of you, I do apologize. My deep and sincere apologies for. Oh, by the way, there we go. This is uh, the latest page. We can see that MDU upped its dividend 2.3%, but check that out. This was uh, announced today, I think, right? Pepsi declared their next dividend, no change. This is just stuff in my portfolio. I did buy more Lionel Bazel. They declared their next dividend. Kimberly Clark, Clorox, yada, yada, yada. But I want to get back to HII for you, Florin, because that's what I want to do here. I want to give back a little bit to you guys. So hopefully this is, please, just work. There we go. See, just got to say please. So looks like they stopped paying a dividend for a while there. Nine years of growth. And, okay, Kate, see, thank you. Huntington Ingalls was a Northrop Grumman subsidiary. Okay. And I'll just, yeah, let me go through these for you here, uh, Florin. You can you can pause this, go back, uh, see their dividend yield is currently 6% above the five-year average. Remember, this is just price and value are two different things. And here I'll go. You can, you can pause these, look at them a little bit later. Uh, oh, free cash flow per share. A little bit, a uh, little bit chopping down there. I would definitely look at that. So total sales up. Shares outstanding, only 40 million. And let me know if you guys think that's a good idea. If I just like put this stuff up for a second, I'll look at it for you guys. And I don't know, give quick opinions if I see it. Net debt has been coming down a little. I like to see that. Government should keep funneling money into them as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, Paolo, any hope for Beyond Meat? I did read a news blurb that there is a company that does lab grown um lab grown chicken i think they take like a i don't i don't know i don't i'm trying to wrap my head around it they take a sample of it and then they grow it in the lab it's really crazy but i think they're starting to progress through uh through that um somebody else wanted to see something let me see bat kevin i'll just uh let's see <sighs> I know it's going to happen someday to you. Anybody a Morrissey fan out there? That's probably dating myself. A lot of people are like, who? Oh, let's see. We're in Great British Pounds. 
did I I picked the wrong one? Let's see if they have a British American. Come on, baby, you can do it. BTI, there we go. I was on the London Stock Exchange. This is BTI. Now we're in USD for those of you here in the United States. Uh, $59.76 is the base case, 44 bucks. So they're saying it's 12% undervalued, even with the worst case. A couple numbers there. And then let's do uh, old BTI. Bitty. Bitty, bitty, bitty. 45. So they're saying borderline safe. But they have been growing a dividend for 20-year CAGR of 10%. Nice. 20, they're coming up on dividend aristocrat a few years away. And yeah, this I don't they haven't been cutting, but this is, I think, the Forex, the foreign exchange con, conversion con, currency conversion, I do believe. Here my wrist popping, uh, popping and locking going on there, baby. And dividend yield is about in line. So yeah, I don't know if you want to wait on this. BTI. Here you go. Put up some numbers from them here. Their free cash flow per share. You guys can, again, like I said, pause this if you want, whatever, on the replay. It should work. I think it should work. Yeah, this is expensive for Simply Safe. I really do like it. And like I said, I only make a few bucks from YouTube and I'm funneling a lot of it. Funneling, fun funneling a lot of it into Simply Safe and Alpha Spread now to show you guys. But so I'm at $399 a year, but I use this on the channel all the time. I do think it is pretty nice that they give the dividend safety scores. But if you were to sign up now and they lock you in at what you sign up at, I think it's $499. So I will, um, yeah, keep sharing this. And Citizen, what's up, Cody? What's going on, man? I just He just did a video on SCHD. <clears throat> really cool. Uh, Cody, by the way, Citizen of the Year channel. Um, yeah, AMAT, there we go. Safety score of 86, but that yield looks a little bit low. Dividend growth, 17 years uninterrupted, five years of growth, and 11% 10-year CAGR. So not a huge yield, but I do, do like that space. I think the semiconductor here in the United States is only going to grow. And I do have some thoughts on that whole thing. I think we could be entering another Cold War, but this time with... China, maybe China and Russia. And it's weird, right? That the first Cold War was Cuba, which was off the coast of a superpower. It was its own country, had foreign intervention from Soviet Russia. And that was a hot button issue. What are we seeing now? We're seeing another small country that's off the coast of a really large superpower. And we're giving foreign intervention to Taiwan, uh, to Taiwan. And, I, you know, we're helping them. We're at least friendly with them. And the whole thing about, you know, Nancy Pelosi going there and different politicians trying to go in there and get their face in the news. And it's, um, I don't know, man. I think we're going to be in another Cold War with uh, China. Hopefully it never turns hot. But I think the world realizes that it's not good for Taiwan to be manufacturing like 90% of the world's semiconductors. So we'll see. And then with the whole Biden with um, what would, what did Joe Biden do? He, he gave that ultimatum a few weeks ago, month ago, maybe where dude, they're trying to keep China in the behind us and almost putting an intelligence embargo, I think on China by not allowing any of the, the most knowledgeable people to be involved with that. You had to renounce your U.S. citizenship if you wanted to keep uh, working for the companies that were supplying, what, semis to China and information to, and tech, something like that. That may be a little bit off, but all right. Anyway, hey, Amat. Uh, yeah, doesn't look, uh, I don't know. I, I might pass for now. Maybe if that yield pumps up above <laughs> like one and a half percent, something like that. But the financials, yeah, but they can pay that dividend forever. 19% free cash flow payout ratio, super low. Um, yeah, their numbers look good. Very safe, very solid company. 877 million shares outstanding. And um, return on equity, what do we got? Really high. Roik, really high. Solid company is uh, AMAT. Low debt, 20%. And super high ICR. And I'll get you an intrinsic value. Right, yeah, right, yeah. If I can get my cursor there, let's see. 
they give. Hey, Matt. There we go. Old A Matt. Anybody named Matt here? 98. So they're saying it's overvalued by 6% with the uh, the base case. And then the worst case is going to be obviously much more, 32%. So I'd probably hold off on uh, on A Matt for, for a bit. I got to get caught up with these comments here, guys. I love it. I love it. Um, oh, dude, Ryan's in the house. Hold on. Let me let me pop on back over to, to this. Stop sharing my screen. Um, yeah. So anybody want to know anything? You want to hop on for the last 20 minutes, Ryan? I can uh, I can shoot you the link if you want to. Anybody want to look up anything? <laughs> Sipping some Starbucks right now. Me? Who? You? I don't know who. You, I, I'm. Ooh. Let's see. Uh, trying to think of these comments here. Oh, I'm, I'm reading the wrong one here. Duh. Casey, <laughs> I got a little pop-up window because remember in the past, I didn't know what you guys were saying. So now I pin it. I downloaded a whole program that's like from way back in the ancient days of the internet. It's a little pin and it keeps the window on top. So now I have this um, YouTube chat pop out. So I don't have to be just on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. So um, so this is where, let me get Ryan his link. And da -da 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 -da. Ryan will jump on with us as soon as I figure out how to do that. <laughs> Hold on, Ryan. Where am I at here? Um. Oh, here. So there's a little tab. It says invite. And I'm going to do this. Oh, let's see if I can email it right away. That would be awesome. I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I am in the wrong one. This is riveting, guys. I know. I know. <laughs> Hold on here. But if you want, if you want Mr. Williams on, you're just going to have to sit and bear it with me. I'm stumbling. I'm bumbling. What are you guys going to do today? Anybody going to go out and uh, buy your turkeys? <clears throat> Let's see here. I we I heard about air frying a turkey. Has anybody air fried a turkey? Would you air fry a turkey here in the year 2022 as I'm talking to you and doing three things? Oh, my God. What is that? Sorry here. I copied a link and it's like, sorry, sorry, everybody. I'll just profusely apologize until, let's see. <laughs> All right, there we go. So this guy will be on in a second. I'm going to have to get the uh, old school, the old school, these guys here. And we'll get to Casey's about semis, uh, cyclical nature. Hard to do well with buy and hold strats in highly cyclical industries. Far better to sell at peaks and buy at troughs. Yeah, but you got to know when the peak and trough is, right? I mean, that could be the trick of it. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what uh, we'll see what's going up. Uh, <laughs> see what's going on with. Uh oh, what did I do? Oh no, <laughs> I. Uh, Hold on here, everybody. What did I do? Oh, here we go. All right, hold on, hold on. We're coming. We're coming back. <laughs> We're coming back. Settings. Da, da, da. Oh, this is just wonderful. Come on, you can do it. Nice. Nice. This is just wonderful. Okay, and <laughs> woo, we love it. That's what we do around here, man. Look at that. Everybody's just dropping off like, hey, get the hell out of here. All right, let me do this. I think I'm there. Bring this guy on. Hopefully. What's up, man? I don't know. You guys can still hear me. You guys hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. I... What's up, man? Dude, that's awesome. I lost like nine people. <laughs> when, oh, when they I'm, found out I was coming on, yeah. Exactly. No, I was plugging in my uh, my headphones and I knocked out the camera link. So I love it, man. What's up? 
How are you doing? Not much, man. I was in the middle of actually sending you a voice message back um, when I realized that you were live. So I tuned in and the rest is history. Nice. Yeah, too. That's awesome. I just, I don't know what I did. And then I'm just, the, dude, this is the beauty of it. And this is what people love, I think. Yeah, some people are deep front. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I don't know. We're trying to figure that out. So this is um, actually going to be like the first year we're doing Thanksgiving away from the family. So, you know, we're trying to figure out what, what we want to do. We've talked about maybe going to like the Pepper Mill, which is a restaurant here in Vegas. Um, pretty iconic restaurant. They're open on Thanksgiving. We talked about going there. There's this buffet at this, some hotel kind of not too far from us that we talked about going to. Maybe ice skating. I don't know. We got to figure out something fun to do. What about yourself? Ice skating? Oh, just here. Family, same old, same old. We did spend Thanksgiving in Vegas in 2020 when everybody uh -huh. was hunkered down for COVID. And yeah, we, uh, dude, we, <laughs> we did the most traveling that year that we've ever done. That was crazy because flights were so cheap. Hotels right. were stupidly cheap. <clears throat> My kids, we stayed at a hotel in Vegas called the Alara. And yeah. it was just, it was beautiful. They, they still remember it. Can we stay at the yeah. Alara again? I'm like, sure. Like, bring it up on the phone. I'm like, eh, maybe not so much. It was like yeah, $500 so Alara, a night now. Or something. I think the Alara, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's connected to pl the Planet Hollywood Miracle Mile shops. It's all like right there. Yep. And, um, yeah, I was walking through Miracle Mile the other day with, uh, my girlfriend and where it connects to that other hotel, you can see, and I think there's like an indoor pool in there is, is, do you remember that it's either indoor or outdoor, but like right from the mall, there's a view of this really nice looking pool, but it looks like I, a really nice, nice, nice hotel. Yeah, I do remember a pool. Uh, I think it was, I didn't see the indoor one. It was the outside, but no, dude, okay. yeah, it's maybe it's that's great. what it was. Yeah. Nice. Dude, we went, yeah, we went to Vegas too sometime in 2020, like May 2020, and it was so cheap to get here and so cheap to stay here, and when we were here, there was like nobody at all. It was it was an interesting time to come for sure. Yeah, I'm glad we did it. I'm glad we did it. Um, oh, here, Michael. Sorry, let me close my pop-up here. I got a little pop-up window. I'm, I'm all technical now or advanced. Yeah, this hey, little, mate. it's called uh, desk pins. It's called desk yeah. pins. Okay. And it's from like the, the beginning of the internet days. And it's just that little thing. It's a little pin. You just stick it in there and you can, it'll always stay on top. I love it. Um, yeah, Michael, we talked about TSN, uh, Tyson Foods, old chicken chicken company. Yeah, dude, this is an interesting one. What's a, what's a death care company? <laughs> Damn. Dude. Maybe like... Um... Maybe like hospice or maybe like nursing homes or something like that. I, well, I, yeah, I didn't know if he was being serious or if he was kind of, um, yeah, let us know, man. Like what, what com name one company. I thought he meant like, you know, people that make mansions and all that stuff, but, um, there you go. Yeah. Shamir said, you're always pretty nice. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. 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 Let's see. You see, this is what I'm saying. He said, keep messing up. It's mildly entertaining. Only mildly, but it is fun. Dude, so I looked at it real quick. I think I was at like, we are like 34 or something. And I plugged that in and I knocked my camera cord out. Uh, yeah. So okay. then within like 30 seconds, it dropped down to like 26, 27, which Dude, is so fun. I'm looking, at, but... I'm looking at CSV right now. It's like. Oh no, he's in the matrix. Or I'm frozen or Oh there you are. Wait. Is everybody here? Can you hear me? See me? <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I think it was yours. I don't know. Yeah, you so were looking, looking at, at Yeah, I'm looking at CSV. It actually from what I can see so far, it looks decently solid. The revenue's growing. Earnings isn't too terrible. Earnings per share. Um <clears throat> excuse me, oh, taking a look at the fumes. balance sheet right now. The debt the debt is increasing as time goes on. Um, pretty consistently, so that's maybe not the best. Um, yeah, I'll bring it up real quick on uh, see what uh, Simply Safe gives. Let's see here. And yeah, it doesn't look too bad, I guess. Looking at the dividend stats, you know, low yield, low starting yield, very low payout ratio, which is nice, and a nice five year growth rate on the dividend, about 15%. But the dividend growth history is not that long. Only three years of growth, but 11 years of payment. So there is some consistency here. Looks good. Yeah. Funeral and cemetery services. 
and yeah. merchandise in the United States. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Merchandise. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I, I think Hero I know what merch. that means, but yeah, right, dude. That's yeah, that's big booming industry. I hear all the kids are all about <laughs> funeral home merch. Uh, oh, yeah. They let's see, 1991 they were founded in Houston. Here okay. they. Uh, the cemetery operations segment provides interment rights for grave sites, lawn crypts, mausoleum spaces, and the niche. Interesting, yeah. Related cemetery merchandise, including outer burial containers, memorial markers, monuments. That's kind of morbid, but dude, it's it's still yeah, a business. Like, look at that growth right there. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Twenty two percent. I mean, yeah, tw- almost twenty percent ten year CAGR. Huh. They haven't raised it in a minute here, so we'll see if they're going they're to due. do that. But yeah, free cash flow power ratio only sixteen nice. percent. This would be a definitely something interesting, a super super niche with. But their sales have been dropping since twenty twenty. Doesn't that? That's kind of creepy, isn't it, man? Look at that. When COVID struck, boom, twenty yeah. percent sales growth, and now as it's been diminishing, their sales have been coming down. So I I guess that would be one thing to watch out for but yeah they've been buying back shares lately i mean prior to 2020 it looks like they had a huge jump in sales in 2020 like you said and it's still kind of we're still kind of seeing the effects of that today but prior to yeah. that it looks like the sales there are still increasing but very slowly and i'd be curious to see yeah. too like where they um where they offered their services i mean they're based in houston but it's got to be more than just in houston right I would, I don't know. I would think so. Yeah. That's uh interesting CSV. Yeah. Honestly, that's, that's a, uh, I don't know how you would do that. And my brain was thinking like, is this a stock to talk about around Halloween time, like cemeteries and funerals and whatnot, but you know, it's just, it's crazy. Like we don't want to think about it, but it is a business and it is something that's always going to be in need. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, there we go. Yeah, so Casey is reiterating kind of what we said. Uh, it was a major pandemic winner. Death rates will normalize, and it's up to management to use the windfall to launch them into the next day. Yeah, and that's that's what a lot of companies are going to have to do when they're, um, you know, like like the oil companies, dude. They're flush with cash right now. They're paying special dividends. They're buying back shares. They're paying down debt. Let's see. Um, and the thing too about funerals is like, there's not, this company I would imagine is not going to be spending too much on research and development. I mean, there doesn't seem to be too much innovation in the funeral department. So that's one less thing they have to worry about spending money on. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, kind of right, Steve. Yeah. It's uh, low yield. So it's high growth and it does look mm-hmm. like that. I assume you meant growth and not growth because high growth is, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Look at Guy. Ah, come on, get out of here, Guy. Long guy, you're Cam the man. Stewart. Yes, you're too man. kind to us, Guy. And Shamir, I don't know if you saw that, Russ. A couple comments up. Shamir called us the bad boys of dividend investing. Oh, boy. Here we oh, go. Oh, boy. The Warren Buffett of Pep on the left and the Warren Buffett. <laughs> That's right, man. Better yeah, I not just... cross... You better not meet us in a dark alley. Yeah. By the way, I did read that uh, Warren Buffett book Ryan recommended. I don't think you did that. Oh, did you finish all... it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like 14 hours long. Thank God for Hoopla. Yeah. I'm you telling think, you, man. man. Overall, overall, what'd you think of it? I wish it would have went up until today because it ends in the like 90s, 2000. Right? I, well, there was a blurb. I think it was an addendum on the end because he mentioned Buffett's first wife dying in 2007, which by the way, everybody, a little bit of story time. I had no clue that uh, Susie Buffett, his first wife never divorced. She just left in like the early eighties or something. Yeah. Late seventies, early eighties, sometime in in that time frame. I think she moved to San Francisco. He was basically by himself and she felt bad for him from what I, what I got. So she started trying to set him up on like dates because they said he was only eating like popcorn and weird stuff. And his kids were like, it's so he had this, um, Manx, um, Oh, what was her name? Her last name was Manx, M-E-N-K-S. It wasn't Nellie. It was something, uh, no. something else. Basically, it was a friend of, of Susie's who yeah. you know lived in Omaha. And basically, she told this friend like that we can't remember her name. Go, go, just go Astrid check on Manx. Warren. Astrid yeah, Manx. Maybe go make him some food. Just spend some time with him. And that developed into something more. And then the three of them had just a really 
really interesting like relationship from then on out. It worked for him, right? But as we read in the book, it was the subject of a lot of conversation. Like people definitely had their thoughts about it, but Warren just kind of shrugged it off and you know basically said, "Well, you know, it works for us, and everyone involved is happy." So. You know, that, that's about all I care about. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone said, look at this guy. He's got two women. He's a player, yeah. you know, and you never hear that. I mean, it's not going to affect his investing, you wouldn't think. But anyway, the point is that I also took for it. The larger point is that money is not everything that Susie wanted something more than just her husband constantly. And it's it's like he he read and reads uh, annual yeah. reports like people read comic books. And he, I guess he, from what I understand, he loves it. Like he literally loves reading annual reports. Um, yeah. So interesting. I don't know how we got started on that. Oh, we were called the Buffett of, uh, let's see, Pepsi and Starbucks would be great. Yeah, I think so. I do like them. And dude, they had the Red Cup Rebellion though this week yeah, with the Starbucks employees. They said it's like pure hell and chaos with the, with the red cups. And then I come home and what's on my counter where there's two red cups. <laughs> like, I think it was like a hundred stores, something like that. were we're having some trouble there. Right. I didn't yeah, get yeah. too deep into it, to be honest. Uh, let's see, Phil. So, um, Oh, this is a nice one, Caleb. Yeah. T row. I've had my eye on them. It's, it's at times I get my eye on so many companies. Like if I literally was to buy every company I had an interest in before I know it, I think I would have like 250 companies in the portfolio. It would just, and at that point might as well just buy an ETF. And just, yeah. You know, and that's what they say is that the more companies you buy, the closer you will get to being average with the market, which sometimes is, you know, when you're stuck in like your Intels and AT&Ts and, holding on for dear life. It's uh, sometimes it looks good, but then there's other times like, I, dude, I love being in PepsiCo. It's, you know, I got lucky with that one that it's, it's just been performing so well, but um, yeah. So let's see the monsters. Have you seen the monsters Rob zombies remake of the monsters? No, but didn't you say it wasn't very good? Oh, it was awful. Yeah. Awful. Like not even good. Awful. It was awful. Awful, awful. I'm surprised that was even allowed to just be made into content. But, dude, I would avoid it. And if you want to see, just just try. Watch 10 minutes of it. You won't. It was just, it was terrible. And I love Rob Zombie, so I was a little upset for that. Did um, it come out recently? Right before Halloween, a couple of weeks before okay. Halloween. So he so even had the recent. timing right. Like he had the perfect timing when everybody was wanting to watch those, uh, watch that. But yeah, um, oh, maybe we'll end with, with Guy since he was so nice to compliment us. C-I and H-U-M. That's not ringing a bell at all. Yeah, I don't I don't recognize either of those. Cigna. Cigna. Hmm. Safety score of 79, 1.4% yield. So Cigna is, um, I don't know. It doesn't look anything jumping off the page to me with Cigna at all. I mean, low 14% cash flow payout ratio. And then I don't know what HUM is. Oh, Humana. <laughs> they have a 0.59. So they're both really low yields. Humana is a 99 safety score. And... Let's see their dividend growth, 14% eh, 10-year CAGR for Humana. But they should be getting ready to raise their next payment after January. But their dividend yield is 10% below the five-year average, and it's not even – it's 0.59%. So, you know, I don't know. I think I would go to other um, – I would look at other uh, – I know they're not – it says managed healthcare. I don't know if you'd call them insurance companies. Do you have any insurance companies? No, man. I um, The only financial stocks I have at all, I'm actually sad to say, are business development companies, both pretty small positions in my portfolio. Um, but those are the only financials I have. I'm at some point looking to expand into maybe get grabbing a bank. And, you know, I'd like to have some sort of insurance exposure, I think. I just don't know what. Yeah, my two big ones are Prudential and um, MetLife. And by the way, time back into Warren, right? That's why he loves insurance companies because they use the float to the float, invest. Yeah. So, yeah, I know it's... that was one of the things that got me kind of motivated to expedite my search for something like that for, after reading that book. 
But <laughs> so what are the, the two that you have, Prudential and MetLife, what do they yep. specialize in, or if anything? Like is MetLife just life insurance and Prudential? Yeah, they're both else, pretty right? much like life insurance, casualty. And okay. I mean, it's just money, dude. Like they're doing the same thing when I looked into them. And now I think like, why am I not investing more? Prudential, I, I had seen it fell. It had come back. Um, let me pull it up and then we'll get out of here real quick, everybody. Think of HAS. Think of Hasbro. While I'm pulling up, what do you think of Hasbro? You guys got to forgive me too. You see me squinting. I don't have my contacts in, so I can't. Oh, I'm really, nice. I'm really blind. I didn't even know you wore contacts. I wear contacts yeah, man, too. I'm blind as a blind as a bat. <laughs> like I'm, I'm probably two feet away from my computer screen and rest. <laughs> like you're totally blurry. The comment that you have on the screen yeah. from Guy, completely yeah. blurry. I can't read it at all. Like it's bad. Yeah. Nice. Well, we're almost done here. So let me just pull that up real quick because I want to, I'm interested now as soon as I can find my share screen. Oh, we'll find it eventually. There we go. Prudential 75. Uh, yeah. 4.47% yield, but it's uh, pretty much in line with the five-year average, but 12% 10 year CAGR. Um I forget why they had that cut. I was during the last recession. That's why, yeah. obviously. And yeah, they're getting ready to raise again. So I think I might get in before that. But yeah, it's just average. I mean, it's pretty much in line with, with uh, that's why. So it was up to 121. So 85, 78. Um, I like them. I don't know. I might buy more, uh, more prudential. 20% free cash flow payout ratio. So it's pretty it's low. Even though it has jumped up, it was normally single digits, 10%. Yeah, I like it. I don't know. Is is there a, um when looking at the free cash flow payout ratio, is there a certain number you look for, you look to stay under? It's, yeah, I mean, it's different, right? I mean, so with tobacco, I think 80%. Yeah, you but go I know, higher. Yeah, I know like in the, like the rule of thumb is around 60-ish percent because that leaves okay. room for growth. But I mean, sometimes I think the lower the better, and yeah. but yeah, I think like Procter and Gamble's usually around like sixty five or sixty percent, something like that, sixty five maybe. Yeah, um, I, the reason I ask, I put out a video talking about Starbucks today, or in it I was talking about Starbucks and mentioned their free cash flow payout ratio, which is like just under, I think just under fifty percent. And Seeking Alpha gave them like a really bad grade for that, but to me that didn't look too bad. But I was curious. I was, that's what made me ask. I was just curious if there's any sort of rule of thumb that, that people should follow for something like that. Cause I know with like a payout ratio, just earnings payout ratio, it is 60% for a company like Starbucks. It's kind of like the, you know, that's, that's kind of the rule of thumb, like you were saying, but I just wondered if that carried over to free cash flow as well. I, you know, it's, I, I, it's just a lot different with the earnings because that number can be so financially manipulated, you know, yeah. um, financially engineered, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, with that free cash flow to me, it's just so much of a because right, there's only the four things you can do with free cash flow is you can pay a dividend, you can buy back shares, you can return um, pay down debt, and then you can also just put that just onto the balance it. sheet. Yeah, just just mm -hmm. keep it as cash on hand. Um, there you go. There you guys some comments that KC left about uh, about um, Cigna, right? Cigna, yeah, I think it was Cigna. Uh, all right, guys, I think it's it's time. It's time, and then we'll end with Guy because he's so nice. Who told you I'm susceptible to flattery, Guy? It's if you Starbucks reserve roast stores. Yeah, we did. Have, we'll end with that. Have you ever been to a Starbucks reserve? Yeah, I've been there. There's one in downtown Sacramento. It it would look like a nice place, but it was not a nice place to go, um, unfortunately. But yeah, I've been into one. You can tell that it's like a little bit supposed to be a little nicer than your average Starbucks store. But the one that I went to didn't have any cocktails. That would have been cool. I might have to find one here in Vegas that's that's kind of like that. I bet there's got to be at least one around here. Now, I thought I went to the one in Chicago with my kids last winter. And it's um, – it, it, <laughs> sorry, I laughed because we did a whole thing for Chris. So it was the weekend before Christmas. And there's a very famous hotel in Chicago called the Palmer House. So Potter Palmer, you know, one of the – the uh, heavyweights in Chicago I uh, got the city growing. He had a, the, and it's owned by the Hilton now. So it's this hotel from the early 1900s. It's the second one 
we're all excited. The kids have always wanted to stay there because it's so old. It's such an old, like nice hotel. And we, oh, we went to the reserve, the, the, the roaster or the roastery it's called. I don't know if that's different than reserve, but anyway, so it was an old hotel. The problem though, is that the walls were paper thin and there, there was people that were talking the entire night. There was two men and a woman and we could just hear them talking and talking and talking. And it got to be to the point where we called, you know, they're like, well, they, they went to the room. They're like, this is our room. We're just talking. And we hear them like, through the wall. Dude, we slept awful. And it's still something we joke about today because I kid you not, these people were talking from like 11 o'clock at night when we kind of started trying to go to, to sleep until we left at around noon the next day. Wow. Nonstop. It was at least 13 hours of straight talking, just two men and a woman just talking and talking. And I, we kept thinking like, dude, this is a prank. I mean, it was like four in the morning and I'm, so my kids were all up. I'm like, I think there's a camera in here. And they're just trying to see like, what's this family going to do? Because these people will not stop talking. Dude, maybe and, they were talking about dividend stocks, you know, because when you get on the subject of that, it's like, you could be you could be there talking all day. And exactly. Not even realize how much time has gone by. <laughs> so the moral of the story is twofold. One, always be aware of really old historic hotels because they have really thin walls usually. And two, <laughs> even when something bad and crazy happens, you still can make a memory. And to this day, well, it's only a year later, we still joke about it. So anyway, all right, guys, uh, we're gonna I'm gonna get out of here and. Uh, yeah, thanks for swinging on by. We talked about the five highest yielding dividend kings, and uh, yeah, that's it. So, thank you, Ryan, for hopping on and and bringing us on home. So we're gonna get out of here, and uh, I don't know. That's it. I will talk to you guys in the uh, in the next one. So long, everybody. Thank you guys.